Oh. At this time, I'll call the meeting to order for the Dixon County Commission for July 27th, 2023. Would you please stand and join in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On our agenda today, we have one item to remove off the agenda, and we're just going to push that back probably a few weeks from now, but it is in regards to the resolution to amend the animal at large uh, rule that we have. And then also we're going to add one item to the agenda, and that is um, in regards to consider the sales tax question uh, which is specific, the quarter percent specific for the public safety project. I would move that we approve the agenda as amended. And I'll second it. We have the motion and the second for approval of the amended agenda. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of the July 13th meeting, also expenditures of $113,884.56, a security payment of $3,816, a credit card uh, payments of $17,471.72, and also utilities of $7,692.16. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have the motion and second for approval of the consent agenda. Any other discussion? Anything to set aside? Good. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Commission comments. Ron. I will be spending a little bit of time at the Jimmy Law Detention Center this afternoon. Everything is going well, but uh, they'll be holding me up for the rest of the day after this afternoon. So. Okay. Craig? Yeah, I'll be attending the North Central Regional Planning Commission. It's going to be in Mini Milton Vale. Um, I did have a case, KCA um, Zoom meeting yesterday. Uh, the which a lot of people don't realize, I, I didn't realize the World Cup's coming to Kansas City and it's going to have an impact on Kansas. Of course, they're gonna have five training sites, uh, a couple of them in Wyandotte County uh, and Douglas County, and one of them will be in Riley County even. Uh, there'll be 20 to 25,000 people and at those fans that follow these people. Uh, it's gonna be four to six weeks. Uh, it's gonna have a huge impact. Uh, on the state of Kansas. Uh, bill signing on Friday for the lighting on the wind turbines. That's going to be this Friday. Uh, Jay Hall said we need to get a county policy on Facebook. To, you know what we put on there if we have one. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we do. Uh, Kansas bankers approached the um, legislature about monies invested. You know they want to keep it in the state rather than going out of state. Thompson County, the sheriff filed the, affect you, Jerry. He filed a legal suit on his own, didn't go through the county, turning your county counselor. Uh, and I, I don't know what the reason was, but uh, if he wins, the county is going to be re responsible for if he loses or wins either way. KCA convention will be held in Pittsburgh. KCCA. KCCA in yeah, Pittsburgh. I'm sure that they. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Um, You'll talk about the NACO conference. This past week, um, they did have the NACO conference in Austin, Texas. Um, it was 111 degrees down there when we got there. I told Janelle, leave it there, don't bring it back. She didn't listen. No, didn't. <laughs> so actually, it made it easier to get acclimated to the heat here. After 111 here, this 103 didn't seem too bad. Um, it's always good at those conferences, you hear what's going on with other counties uh, throughout the nation. Uh, I sat in on the farm bill discussion. Um, and of course, any, many of you I'm sure have visited with some of the uh, legislators, senators and Rand and Marshall and um, our congressmen on things like that. and. You know, you would think it would be pretty simple, but it's it's a little bit complicated, um, and a lot of it isn't really that specific. I mean, it is to, to Kansas and wheat and and um, and up through the Midwest, but um, 
you know, there was discussions on how it impacts California and Florida and, and so on. And then there's other portions of it that are pretty significant. Um, and then a lot of the discussions were on the workforce development, finding a workforce, generational type issues on, you know, how do we hand things off to the next generation and also take care of, of all generations, you might say. But, um, but, but anyway, it was, it was an interesting time. We did have uh, they refer to it as a Kansas caucus, but basically um, the KAC went ahead and gathered everybody from Kansas that have to be in attendance. And there were, I don't know, a dozen or 15 of us. And um, so we had a chance to kind of visit with some of the others that were from Sedgwick County, McPherson County and uh, Douglas Johnson and so on. Uh, Sleen County had a presence there. Four. And so and Ford County, yes and Finney County for that matter. Yeah, and you might, and, and we asked, and I don't know if Janelle asked, you asked what it cost. We didn't have anything for the room and the hors d'oeuvres, what do you want to call it, was uh, 450 bucks. Okay. So they set aside a specific room for us to go to and, and um, so uh, that, that's pretty much the extent of that. Um, did, did not have any other comments. We do not have any petitions or proclamations. Um, this would be a time for public comment. Uh, first of all, if there's anybody that's here for an item that is not on the agenda, this would be opportunity for that comment. And we do not have any comments in that regards, but under public comments, uh, since it's gonna, it is gonna be considered um, Later, um, this is opportunity for public comments in regards to the sales tax presentation for public safety projects. Now, Janelle, do you have something specific you're gonna go through first and then we would have opportunity for comments or questions? We've got a PowerPoint presentation that we've got several members of the 911 advisory board or some of our first responders here. So we thought we would uh, review this with you and then take any questions that anybody might have. So our Just chair on the screen so people that are online also. Our chairman is not here, so I would ask Emily <laughs> or any other member of the uh, advisory board to step up and we'll just go through this. <laughs> you sit on the front row, so this is easy. Sort of late. Okay. I was not at all prepared. So just bear with me, Commissioner. Okay, so the 911 Advisory Board has been talking about ways that we can improve our communications throughout the county. Our radios are aging and they're past the capacity that we can fix them or continue to fix them. I mean, we could probably keep piecing them together, but that's not gonna work out very well for our responders that are out in the field. We have a hard time communicating with our deputies, our police officers in Abilene, officers in Chapman, EMS and fire. It's a safety hazard for our first responders that we have got to do something about. So, Allie, thank you. Our biggest priority right now is the 800 megahertz radio system. We would like to convert everything to 800 if we can, which is the purpose of the sales tax question. A quarter cent will get us what we need and then a little bit extra so we can work on getting some new rescue trucks for the county as well. Those are very important when we have traffic accidents with injuries, water rescues, anything like that. So one thing, can I just interject? Yeah. A couple of things. Obviously, there are 12 fire districts within the county for law enforcement agencies, EMS emergency management. So, and in uh, 2022, our rescue trucks or all hazardous equipment trucks responded to 294 calls throughout. Abilene, of course, has the largest. Good job, Cal. Um, you know, but also down in the southern part of the county. So, just additional information for you. And we respond outside of the county Correct. a lot throughout the years, or throughout the year, especially during spring and summer when fires get started. Um, we had a large one this spring in Geary County that required six of our additional fire units from our county and we could not communicate with them at all. 
which was a problem. They have to stop what they're doing to call us for mutual aid, different responses, anything like that. They shouldn't have to. They should be able to reach on their portable and talk to us. So all of our calls begin with radio communications. 911 gets the phone call. The radio becomes our communication afterwards. So every call that we have, we have to have a radio for, and if we cannot communicate with our first responders, we have a big problem getting help to our citizens. Um, we had, what, 45,000, 24 calls in 2022. That's 45,000 incidents of radio traffic that we would have to talk. Next slide. <laughs> Okay, our current radio system is 26 years old. If anybody in here has a cell phone that works that's 26 years old, unless you have an old Nokia that still is up. I think there's one in a museum that still works somewhere. Um, it has reached the end of its life. We, it, it is a problem. It's a safety issue. We can't get parts. Parts anywhere are hard to come by, as you well know your lead time on some things. I still have batteries for headsets that I've been waiting a year and a half for in order to. So parts are hard to come by. Um, everything gets antiquated. It gets aged. It has to be replaced, unfortunately. I'm not. No, don't look at me like that. I'm just, you're looking at me here and saying it. <laughs> I am old. <laughs> And Don't look at me, don't you? all of our surrounding counties are now in an 800 megahertz system. So we're kind of like the donut hole of our region because we're the only one that's not on the 800 system, which means that we can't communicate with our surrounding agencies. So if we had another tornado that took out another town like it did in Chapman, we, we have channels that we can use. However, it'd be easier if we had the 800 so we don't have to convert anybody over to anything else. I, I said that right, right? Thank you. Because <laughs> uh, Chapman Tornado taught us a lot about how poorly we can communicate with other agencies coming in to assist. <laughs> our current challenges is our poor coverage and reception. Our under sheriff was 1700 Avenue. 1700 Avenue, just west of K15. 1700 <laughs> Avenue and Highway 15, and we couldn't hear him, and he was out on a traffic stop. Traffic stops are one of the deadliest things that a deputy can do next to domestics. So if we can't hear them on a traffic stop, our thoughts immediately go to, we've talked to you, initiated contact, now we can't, you're not responding, so are you dead in the ditch? Have you been shot? Have you been run over? What is happening? Um, and, and that was only what, like eight miles away or so? Yes. Coverage was good before the last narrow banding. When they narrow banded, it dropped our reception. They're talking about narrow banding again. And if they do that, we'll be probably hard pressed to get coverage from first and Buckeye. Because we have Abilene officers that can be across town and we can't hear them at all. That, that you know, we expect it out in the county, not in the cities. EMS is the same way. If they're in a basement of a residence, if they're at the hotels, we can't hear them unless they switch to their 800. Um, the wireless devices, everything's going wireless. The government is selling more and more radio in talk space to cell phone companies for better coverage, hence the 5G. Um, so that cuts in more to our radio waves, which makes it harder for us to communicate if we still have the antiquated technology that we're working with. Because technology is great until you don't keep up with the technology. It's like when your phone gets too old and won't accept updates anymore, then you have to go get a new one. Maintenance cost is running about $50,000 annually. That doesn't include if something breaks. We had a wire split not that long ago and we were getting water into the line and we couldn't communicate with Harrington. So we had to have that fixed. Uh, I keep saying the safety issues for our first responders. From a 911 perspective and from dispatch, our responders have to go home every night. 
They're the ones that protect everybody else. And if we can't communicate with them and make sure that they're safe, they can't make sure that the citizens are safe. Not being, being able to respond, communicate with our surrounding agencies. If we had to send people like we did in Greensburg, when that tornado hit there and we sent officers and deputies and people to help and assist there, we couldn't communicate with them there, but with the system we could. If they were across the state, we could still talk to them. Um, and then we need, there is a need for two new rescue response trucks and equipment. Um, they are getting aged every time they have to leave the station. It's wear and tear and we need good equipment to rescue our citizens when they get into trouble. And we have been starting to set money aside for that. Um, the per they were purchased originally with Homeland Security grants. Those grants dollars have dissolved basically. So they're they're no longer available. So, but as you can see, estimated 600,000, that might be a bit low. I don't know, but we need to uh, start planning that out. And as we learn looking for dump trucks, the price changes every week. So <laughs> the sooner we can replace it, the cheaper it's going to be. Um, there's a list of our current needs, everything that, mm -hmm. all the technology that we need to update, which includes radio towers, um, sites for hearing to Anomaly to boost the coverage. Um, eliminate our maintenance costs. Like I said, I was not at all prepared. Please bear with me. We'll have fixed maintenance costs, which will save us money in the long run. It may seem like a big number in the beginning, but when you look at how much that we spend month to month already just piecing stuff together, it's going to save us a substantial amount of money. Then we'll have the new equipment. We'll have the ability to keep upgrading our equipment when we need it because it will be compatible with all the new technology coming out. And then um, replacing those rescue trucks that are in the equipment that is aged that we need to get rid of and get new. This is a, which map was this thing? So this is the map that shows the surrounding counties that have moved into the 800 system or are in the plans of moving into the 800 system. Did I say that right, Brad? Yes, good. Right. There's only five that, that have, not. have not moved to the 800, and we're one of those. And now we should have. So, this is some current radio traffic. This and is one of our deputies trying to get a hold of dispatch. <laughs> he is holding his radio up, trying to catch a signal. He's standing in Solomon, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Where's the sound? <laughs> you can hear him clearly on his dash cam, but communications never heard any of the radio traffic. Oh, but this is what they have to do. They're out on a traffic stop and they have to take their radio off there and then stand up there with, you know, one leg in the air and their mouth held just right. And hopefully they'll catch a good radio signal. You know, you need to do that. I need to do that. Stand yeah. on the radio. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why there's no problem. Like when you had to touch the rabbit ears and you're like, don't move. <laughs> I don't know why there's no sound. I apologize. So. It's the old system. We'll move to the next one. <laughs> this is going to be probably the same thing. Actually, Chancy has. Uh... Yeah, I can demonstrate for you. I, I have a, an 800 radio with me. And across the state, all the training now is has to do with mutual aid and, and uh, agreements across the state with communication. All of our counties, if we would go into Gary County, there's already channels and talk groups created for mutual aid. I could go to any county in the state, turn this radio on and have communications with someone there. I can call their dispatch center um, using North Central 8P SAP. I can call any dispatch center in our region and say, I'm coming into your county. What, what talk group are you guys operating on here? Switch to that and start communicating with them with an 800 radio. That's just the simplicity of it. But we have several other firefighters and people in the room here with us now that when we're out doing severe weather, 
Um, with this portable, I can pick it up and I can call Topeka Weather in Topeka and get a spot forecast immediately from where I'm at, what I'm doing. They, they could say, you're on the wrong side of this storm because I can tell them where I'm at and they can look at the radar. You need to move around to this side and follow the storm because it's going to be coming this direction and get that instant information from them right off the bat. But Dixon County Emergency Management, Topeka Weather. They don't know I'm calling either. So it's just, this is a random out of the blue call. They're not going <laughs> to. Yeah, I was just doing a radio check. See, so we had good communication. EMS already. That's how clear the radio yeah. communication is between Wanamaker and Dickinson County. In the basement here. In inside this building, even what's that? That's that going through a repeater? It, it's going through the 800 towers, and it's using the KHP towers that are up now that we that we as a region paid for also. So with that Homeland Security money that bought the rescue trucks, we used it to create a system around the state, and we do have one of those towers here in Kansas or it's in Dixon County that we talk about. We just need more to fill in the holes in our county and add a little more infrastructure to an already robust system. EMS has been using 800s in their trucks for years now. So when they go to Kansas City, Oklahoma, Denver, wherever they have to go, they can communicate with us clearly from another state. Now, if we can't talk to our deputies eight miles down the road, but we can talk to EMS from another state, we have a big problem we got fixed. So our solution is to move to the 800 system. <laughs> um, it does require new equipment and a couple of tower sites in Abilene and Harrington to cover all the valleys and hills and all the areas where we can't reach right now. Um, it would require replacing all mobile and portable radios in every first responder vehicle. Radios of the 911 Center have already been upgraded. We did that two years ago, three. So they're 100% capable of handling the 800 system. Um, we're going to eliminate most of the antiquated costs for the VHF system that we currently use. And then the sales tax, anything left, will go to the two all hazard response trucks and tools and equipment that need to be updated. Our list of all of our agencies that are affected by this, all of our fire department, all of our fire districts, our EMS stations, and all of our law enforcement agencies. Well, there's quite a few. So, and on this slide, there's uh, there's been a question about the 350 mobile and portable radios. That's to outfit uh, individuals and equipment or vehicles. So that's why the number is so large. And we've gone through and taken the an assessment of all of the responders and the needs for all of these departments to make sure that we um, are able to provide that. So, and this is for staffed and volunteer first responders, so. And after the initial purchase, each department Correct. is required to maintain their own equipment and purchase new whenever they need it. Right, they should build, be building that into their budget, so. Okay, so now the numbers. The cost, Estimated at this time is $2.8 million. And we all know that that number can fluctuate one way or the other. Yeah. And the new tower site maintenance will be, help me with the numbers. So the maintenance for the first two to six years is the five. The 582 or 97,000. Mm -hmm. And then after that, about about ninety seven thousand a year. So this is based on the project that was just completed in Saline County two years ago. Obviously, a different size uh, that was taken into account when we when we started estimating these numbers. And there may be someone in the group that can answer this, but why would that number be so high? I mean, you think all everything's new for the maintenance I mean, costs. So, so why the five hundred eighty two thousand for 
I mean, I went. I'm going to do Brad on that if you want. He's familiar with that. These systems are so robust and they, they require almost continual upgrading because just like us, Dickinson County coming on, its tires all across the state have to be programmed so that they're capable of handling our radios now on top of everybody else's. So those are that number incorporates all that ongoing it, maintenance is probably not a good word, although that's what you're doing. It's just the ongoing programming and keeping it up to date, all the software updates and edits and everything. It's a continuous process. So it's like an electric vehicle. It's going like going from an analog system to a smart system. Because when I keyed up that radio, anybody else that had one of the radios, all they had to do was look down at the radio and they could see it was me talking. Just by looking at the radio, they, they would know who it is. And KDOT, who controls the system now, can see that. And if I'm not an authorized user, they push a button and shut my radio off. So if anybody would happen to come up with an 800 radio that they found, like if I would lose mine, I call and say, I lost my radio. They get in there and they shut it off and it's just a brick. It doesn't work at all anymore. So no one can interfere with our law enforcement should they get a hold of a radio. And that's a phone call and they can do it that fast. All of them are on air program. And the fact that we can identify who's teeing up on the radio is a big help because like our structure fire that we had Tuesday, the mobile home that caught on fire, they had live ammunition in that trailer and it was shooting off rounds and we had firefighters that were in the line of fire and they couldn't get out of their portals. They had to run a quarter of a mile down the driveway to let everybody know that there were live rounds going off. If one of them had been shot and we're down, no one would have known until it was too late. Can I answer that maintenance question? Yes, yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. So our funding options are dipping into property taxes, which we don't want to increase anybody's property taxes. Grants, which they're very far and few between anymore. COVID kind of killed the grant money train just a little bit. And we did apply for a local safety forget what the LSSE grant, safety and security equipment grant, but we won't know what the funding will be available to us until I believe October is when they will uh, let us know. And no matter how many grants we apply for, none of them are going to cover all Correct. of the cost of the project. So that leaves sales tax. So how do we pay for it? So if, if we can pass a quarter cent sales tax, for five years countywide to collect all these funds for this. We could get a five-year lease purchase agreement with local banks to purchase all the equipment now before it gets higher in price and interest rates go through the roof even more than what they are. Um, we can purchase the equipment, pay off the lease over the five years. Um, every agency is responsible for their own equipment after we get everything purchased life expectancy of the radios is a minimum of 12 years and any remaining sales tax dollars would go to the all hazardous response trucks, the rescue trucks and the tools and equipment. We are hoping that the quarter cent sales tax will estimate or generate 675,000 per year by five years. Total would be 3.3 million or just a little bit. Purchase everything. So on a hundred dollar charge, it would be two dollars and fifty cents. Is uh, is what you would pay to go towards this project. This would be a five year request of the voters, and then if uh, we needed to generate additional dollars, then we would have the ability to take it back out to the vote to the citizens and have them vote on it again to extend it or we could let it uh, lapse. Estimated timeline, we start our campaign to get the information out there, explain to our voters why this needs to, why we would like to see the sales tax. Um, the general election is in November. If it passes, come January, start arranging for the lease purchasing. By February, hopefully publish an RFP for the radio equipment. March would be the deadline for the proposals. April, we would like to be able to place orders depending on the lead time. And then with any luck, possibly receive the radios and programs. 
prepare to start installing the new towers and then convert all the new comms, ones, comms over as soon as it's up and running. This is our best guess, wish. Hopefully. It is a need, it's not a want. <laughs> Installations is that covered in this or is that going to be an additional expense on top of it? That would be covered in this. I would expect that those people that bid that that would be a covered expense. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it is with the two tower sites. That's, yeah. that's inclusive. Right. I mean, you know. It would all depend on how we wrote the RFP. Right. That's what I'm going to say. Right. We need to write it so it is included in Correct. this. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Well, what, what brand? I mean, what kind of, what, what I don't know. I don't even think about these, but. Is there a name for them or something? Are they like motor rollers? And on who won the request for proposal? Who got the bid, you mean? Right, right. Yeah. So it'd be so competitive bidding, and right. there's more than one option to consider. And, to, and the motor roller has already reached out wanting to know more about the project, and we said that we would put out the RFP next year. Let me ask you this, and it might be my, my suggestion now that we take the best proposal. Just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's the best. No. Yeah. What do you get the best service for whoever's the local dealers? Which comes with reaching out to right. everyone that's partnered with them. Mm -hmm. One of the positives about doing it last is everybody else has made a lot of the mistakes already, and we can kind of fit into it and know not to do this and to do this and what works good in those counties and how to design mm -hmm. top groups and what to put in there. So it's, we're coming in at the right time, I feel. Get those best practices. Well, it'd be great to have the feedback from the others, and mm -hmm. but um, and you know that's one thing with this your group here. You have a level of expertise, but also thank God utilize that. So um, there's a good connection there mm -hmm. as far as the partnership. To <clears throat> and Sling County has been very open mm -hmm. with their best practices, what they should have done, what other people should do, and things like that. So. We've already been talking with them mm -hmm. since theirs was just done last year. Well, I can only speak for one for me as a commissioner, and I think it's very important we have this. There's no doubt about it, and I'll do anything I can to help get it. But the funding mechanism, I'm not happy with, because I think we need to look at other ways to fund this thing besides doing the sales tax right now. We would love to find a different so, way. And if you I think you need to question. pick the phone up and call the senator, there's funds available in their earmark to be doing this project. I think there needs to be some good communication and we stay out of the taxpayer's pocket for just a little bit. That's my opinion now. I don't know you guys know where I come from. Very important and I want you to have them. I'll do everything I can to get them, but I don't like the funding mechanism. Well, and that's one of the considerations. I mean, I do appreciate the fact that the property tax, I don't think is a good route to go and the sales tax could accomplish that. The difficulty, um, and I appreciate what you mentioned, Ron, but the difficulty with doing that is you don't know if that funding will come available and then there's a waiting period. And so then do you wait till next year or do you wait, you know, how long is the wait before you have the mechanism in place? Now, Having said that, if they would, if there would be some funding come available, um, that sales tax could always be cut off sooner or some, you know, I, I mean, we, you'd have a basis of analyzing that. And, and the only reason I bring that up is example, water treatment plant, it was several million dollars. Well, there was a million dollar earmark from Senator Roberts, which was helpful, but it by no means paid for the entire project. But but it was helpful and we were glad to receive it. So, you it's, know, it, it's- Senator Clays has been very helpful mm -hmm. as well. We've been talking with him, of course. But if there is state funding or federal funding, I mean, it's not like we're going to- Right, we, we absolutely- Food or not look for that. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a timing issue as well. So to make sure that we do receive it, because if we don't start this process, then that delays us that much longer in putting it back to the voters. And we've already seen what the cost would be if we decide to have a special election. That's 
$68,000 probably today. Next next year, it could be more. So it's... And at least with the sales tax, now it's not perfect by any means. And I'm not happy about it. I live in this community. However, anybody that travels through our county and spends money here will also help offset the cost a little bit because we do help people that are not from Dickinson County or Kansas for that matter. So everybody kind of plays a part in assisting just a little bit. Our sales tax would be consistent and probably still lower than what some of the surrounding counties mm -hmm. and throughout the state have for sales tax. I think downtown Salina has an extra sales tax and they're at 10% right. on that special district. Mm -hmm. so, um, now just kind of assuming and, and anyone else from the group can speak, but we have representatives here from all parts of, of the county and, and such. I mean, is there any information or anything you want to put forward on this I, I mean i'm assuming as a group you're in agreement as far as this is the direction to go i think every day we've done the work now we're opening the dive zone and somebody goes home whether it be a firefighter an emt a paramedic or law enforcement officer um i i just think it's critical to have those communications and i don't think you can put a price on a human life I think we, it's, I don't think it's a, it's a buy the app that we have to have right now. We just have to. There's no way around it. I don't want to be the, I don't want to go to somebody's home and tell them they're asking for the buy the app. And I think it's getting that critical. It's not a matter, it's a matter of if, it's just when it's going to happen. We've had, we've had this question come up in our Homeland Security to buy radios to outfit people with using that grant money, which was the original grant money we bought the rescue trucks with, but now we spend that money regionally. And they don't allow you to equip a county with radios with that money because it's that county's responsibility to provide that service for their customers. We're going to call our citizens customers. And that's their job to pay for that because they're receiving that service. That's where it comes from. And that's how it's sold to us. So we've looked hard. Our groups looked hard at all grant opportunities and different stuff to find to fund that. And there are a few small grants out there, but that's user radios. We can buy a couple radios with it. If we we cannot find a grant right now that could build us a tower to put in our county that we need. And we'll be going from six VHF towers that we currently use that are antiquated <laughs> to three towers, but only two of those towers will be ours. The rather one is a state tower. So that, that kind of explains where that is, but we, we our group has looked hard for, for grants to completely take care of this and we just cannot find it. Great. Yes. We've all agreed upon we need it. How are we going to sell it? That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's up to the voters, but yeah. That's how are you gonna, how are we gonna get this out to the public? We'll be meeting with uh, city councils. We'll uh, meet at any of the Civic organizations will take yeah, on that. So we're gonna have a lead group that does this. I mean, we're gonna have organized, you know, from this group that. Mm -hmm. yep. had, yes. Okay, yes. Yes. Speakers. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. You know, All so prepared speakers. Our designated uh, speaker wasn't able to be here. Uh, today, not so. me. No, not me. Thank you. you done a great job, by the way. Our designated speaker wasn't here, but yes, yeah. yes, but yes, that's that is our plan, and yeah. we'll have. Hmm? What I was getting at is, I mean, this you know, nice presentation here. But we got to keep the ball rolling. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, and, yes. and, you know, and not everybody in the county is going to be for it. Right. Oh no. Right. No. Nobody likes to spend money, and nobody wants people taking money from them. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to the safety and security of our citizens and our first responders, this is something that we have to do. But I'll get back to the other point. Then we don't want to have people telling the same thing over and over again. We need yes. to target. You know, that you're only going to go to this group once. Yes. Come in one. Because you can try to oversell it. Yes, yes. That's what we want to avoid. And, and you know, some initiatives, uh, reaching out to the newspaper, but also if there's other media type things we can do, radio or Facebook or or such in the senior centers. But it, it's like everything, you can put it out there and then you'll run into someone. It's like, you know, this is the first I've heard of that. And, and so 
you know, we do have to try to get the information out um, and maybe some mailings or such, but no, that's a good point, Craig. Yeah, because we're not talking wood turbines here. Nobody heard about them. <laughs> we're already aware of the argument that you should have maintained your equipment better, and we did. Mm -hmm. But like everything, it gets yeah. worn out and we got to fix it or replace it at this, you know. When we put the system in in the early 90s, mid 90s, for those of us who were around and remember <laughs> then, we didn't have these. We didn't, you know, you didn't have Wi-Fi at home. Uh, over the over the last couple of decades, everything has literally gone to wireless, and the RF spectrum, the radio frequency spectrum around us right now is just thick with competition on trying everything's trying to communicate. From your Wi-Fi, your video cameras, to computers, to cell phones. I mean, the list just goes on and on. And to, to combat that in 2013, the FCC required all licensed agencies, us included, to narrow that, which means that cut that spectrum, our spectrum in half that we could use, and that cut our range down tremendously. It went to crap, and it's been terrible since. And so uh, even though we've maintained our systems and our towers, uh, they're 20 some years old. We can't get the parts like Emily said. The voter comparators are not available. They work terribly compared to what they used to. And we just can't communicate and get the range we used to because of those reasons. So uh, the, the 800 system has been built with that in mind. And, and those, that spectrum is unique to public safety. So we're not competing with all those other signals. And, and so. We haven't, as a county and cities, we haven't uh, dodged, dodged our, our responsibility in maintaining things. We've maintained it the best we could. The landscape has changed. And so with, like Emily said, cell phones, you have to get a new cell phone periodically because those things change. This is our way of updating our cell phone, but it's our public safety communications. So I just want to throw that out there. We have states that are putting bans on gasoline vehicles starting in 2035. So what does that say to people that have to get a new vehicle that they have to get an electric one now? Everything changes and we have to move with it, unfortunately. Yeah, well, thank you. Are there any additional comments? This is, yes. As, as just a taxpayer in the county, I can tell you that just from the presentation that she did, Unprepared very well. <laughs> I'm convinced that it needs to happen. And and you know that is a, a good point that um, when people talk about you're spending taxpayers' money or you're creating sales taxes for certain purposes to provide service, um, you know all of us that are in the decision making process and in various groups. I mean, you know we're all property owners and taxpayers per se, and and involved from that standpoint. So, any other comments? We have this a little bit later in the agenda to officially discuss an opportunity to have it come forth as a motion um, in a second to be voted on or to be tabled or whatever action that uh, comes from comes from this group. So thank you, and we'll probably be to that portion oh, here. Sure. <laughs> but we'll be to that portion probably here in another 10, 15 minutes. Is he to go sit back down? Yes, you may. <laughs> thank you for that presentation, and, and um, all of you I know are very knowledgeable of it. So, and you just have to be front row and next in line. And Okay. Our next item is report of county officers, Janelle. Uh, commissioners, as Emily uh, also mentioned, we did have a fire in the 1700 block of 2100, ever, 2100 Avenue. So we did uh, send our tanker out there that the county owns to assist. And it seemed like it was a pretty, pretty large fire that our first responders took care of. Also, thank you to the city for allowing us to pick up concrete from their 14th Street project as we are hauling that to various bridges. 
and it has resulted in savings. We're using it as riprap. If we had to purchase it, it would be $31 a ton. So we've uh, re we've been able to save about $30,000 right now. So that's good. We're also hauling rock to Vane Road to take care of that since we do have the bridge at 1100 Avenue closed. And we're trying to get that to up to par. And then we also inst installed a tube on Camp Road. Uh, we're trying to address some of the flooding issues there in the 300 block. So that would be all I have right now. Okay, thank you. Our County Councilor, Doug Thompson. We have, uh, we finished up the tax sale as far as we can. There's one parcel of real estate that somebody is objecting to and has filed a claim with the court. And so we will be putting that together to defend their allegation and uh, look forward from there. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the next item is notices and communications. Uh, we've received by mail the save the date, October 14th, 2023. It's the uh, legacy dinner that the Eisenhower Presidential Library has. And that is something, it's uh, $150 per person and there's sponsorships available. And so if someone wants to mark their calendar, um, that's available to attend if they so choose. Um, the, uh, Earlier today, during our work session, uh, we did receive um, information from Marsha Schneider in regards to uh, just HR, some of the openings that we have. And then we also uh, had an individual come forth and talk about some of the concerns they had as far as wind turbines and gave a very good presentation about some of the safety issues they were concerned about. Uh, that they wanted to consider, have us for consideration as part of the decision process. But having said that, it has not yet come to planning and zoning. It has not been formalized, um, but there is active discussion throughout the community on that. Were there any other notices and communications? Uh, any of the other commissioners would want to bring up? Email that would there, buddy. Um, so this is from a buyer family um, and it's regards to the Hope Ridge wind project. Um, and they wanted to convey that they are in favor of that particular project and thought it would be um, helpful for the county as well as many individuals. I don't believe we have anything else. We do not have uh, any resolutions to consider or unfinished business. The next item we have uh, kind of a housekeeping, uh, but it is in regards to an assistant deputy coroner contract. Uh, Janelle, would you give us the background information on that? Yes, uh, Dr. Holmes is the coroner that responds to uh, calls on our scenes. And uh, if he is unavailable, we did not have an assistant deputy coroner for quite some time. I think the last one was in 2020. So Dr. Ziegler is new, Dr. Michael Ziegler is new to the community and to the hospital and he is willing to uh, be on call for us. So this agreement would uh, compensate him at $1,500 a year to be on call. And then when he does respond to a scene, $250 for each call when when the services are needed so we're just trying to make sure that we fill those gaps when dr holmes has got to be out of town and, and make sure that we we're covered in those situations so we would ask that you sign this agreement i move second it okay we have a motion we have a second that we go ahead and enter this uh, contractual agreement in regards to an assistant deputy coroner any other discussion all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item we have, uh, we have taken, actually we removed that from the agenda in regards to the animal at large resolution and we're gathering some additional information to bring that back later. Uh, so the next item we'll have then is the letter of support um, on the to the community development department. Would you want to Tell us a little bit about that briefly, Janelle. So Bree Beck is the Community Development uh, Director with the North Central Regional Planning Commission, and they requested a letter of support to the Kansas Department of Commerce for their community development 
department. And uh, we wanted to make sure that they understand the role that the Regional Planning Commission has played in the county for us and support their efforts. Uh, Regional Planning Commission has worked with us over the past 40 years on various projects throughout all of our communities out and out in the unincorporated area and unincorporated areas. So we're just lending our support for this. And we, the letter was due on the 20th, I believe, and we were going to be out of town. So I drafted a letter of support and would just ask that you or make sure that you're aware of that and in support of it. Support of the support letter. There we go. Okay. Any questions, comments? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to support it. We have the motion and the second for a letter of support, North Central Kansas, uh, or North Central Regional Planning Commission. Regional Planning Commission. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next item we have is, and we this was added to the uh, agenda in regards to this sales tax question. Uh, for public safety, uh, for the public safety project. And of course, this is what our presentation was on uh, earlier. Are there questions or comments from the commission or based on what we've heard, any concerns that anyone would have? <coughs> Are there any additional comments from the audience in regards to this? The presentation was excellent. I think it outlined, um, you know, basically what needs to be considered and the safety aspect. Janelle? I will just read the question that we are proposing. Shall a retailer sales tax in the amount of one quarter percent be levied in Dickinson County for the purposes of financing the cost of public safety projects, specifically a new radio communication system across the county to take effect the first day of April in the year of 2024, and such tax to be in addition to the presently existing retailer sales tax. Said tax shall expire after five years from the date such tax is first collected. Said tax shall be distributed pursuant to KSA 12-187B1 as may be amended. So that's the question that would be placed on the November 7th ballot for the citizens to vote on for this project. And then as Commissioner, I'll go ahead, Commissioner Chamberlain. Yeah. Uh, before we've had to get the legislature's approval to do this. Yeah. We did have to get the legislature's approval. approval. That's what I thought we did. Correct, because we were at our cap. Yeah, I thought we it was on, there was four counties. That, mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I had. I was Remember, I thought I remember it right. We actually think that's because we did it beforehand instead of asking after we put it on the ballot when we went and spoke to the Capitol. That's all I have learned. Two times, I guess, that's happened throughout the state. And as what, as Commissioner Chamberlain mentioned, um, you know, still to get the information out, it's going to be up to people within this room to have an organized effort mm -hmm. to provide the information to give people. Uh, an opportunity to consider what they think the benefits are or, or or drawbacks or answer questions so and if anybody has questions please feel free to reach out to me okay. i'll refer to brown <laughs> i move that we place the sales tax issue on the november Seven. election balance no thank you I'll give the second on that. We have the motion and the second that the quarter percent sales tax question for public safety projects would be on this next uh, election ballot. Um, as Janelle mentioned when she read that, it would go into effect. If, if it was voted on uh, in a positive way, it would go into effect the first day of April of 2024, which gives retailers opportunity to make the adjustments they need to make um, on their charges. Is there any other comment or question? This would be opportunity to bring this up now. 
So we have the motion and the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. So on two to one, uh, the motion does carry. Are there any other comments or questions? We will adjourn. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second to adjourn. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned.